Good afternoon, everyone. You are much welcome to this channel, Mohumza Medical Sciences .com. We are always at your service, and always remember to subscribe and like and share the comments so that we can all see how we can improve on our videos. So, as we continue with lipids, in this video we are going to look at utilization of lipids in the body. After lipids have been digested and absorbed, how does the body use them? What we call metabolism. Metabolism or utilization of lipids. So watch until the end. So metabolism of lipids, as we have seen, that the lipids are stored in the adipose, they are taken in the blood circulation, as they are moving in the blood circulation, in the vessels, in the vessels, in the endothelium, in the endothelium of the blood vessel, we have a hormone, no, not a hormone, an enzyme. And this enzyme is called lipoprotein lipase. Lipoprotein lipase. And it is basically as the, as the fats are moving into the blood circulation, this enzyme lipoprotein lipase is able to break down fats or to hydrolyze triglycerides. As we have seen that the triglycerides are the major portion of the chiromicro. So triglycerides are hydrolyzed to glycerol plus free fatty acids. And this is the hydrolysis reaction. And this one occurs in the blood saturation as the fats are being transported. Because in the endothelium or in the walls of the blood vessels, we have an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase. And this lipoprotein lipase is the one that mobilizes or that breaks down the, fat, the triglycerides into glycerol and free fatty acids. But in case of starvation, these fats which are stored in the adipose can undergo what we call mobilization in the case of starvation. Whereby in the adipose, there is another enzyme called the hormone sensitive. Hormone sensitive lipase. This hormone sensitive lipase, why do we call it hormone sensitive? It is the trigger factor of this hormone is starvation. This hormone is triggered by that during starvation, that is, you have taken long without eating. What happens, starvation triggers the production of hormones like glucagon, like epinephrine, enzymes like thyroxine, hormones like thyroxine. And these hormones are the ones that activate Hormone sensitive repairs in the adipose. And this hormone sensitive repairs also does the same role of hydrolyzing triglycerides, glycerol, and free fatty acids. So the hormone sensitive repairs also breaks them tags to glycerol and free fatty acids. This is what you call fatty acid mobilization. Organization. In the case of starvation, the trigger is not fasting, but starve, starvation. That when you starve for like three to five days, then your fats, the adipose tissue, they are mobilized by hormone sensitive lipids, which is triggered by hormones like glucagon, hormones like epinephrine, and thyroxine. And all of these two processes are the ones that are regarded to as lipolysis. This is lipolysis. These processes are regarded too as lipolysis. The whereby lipolysis is the breakdown of the triacylglycerol into glycerol and free fatty acid. By which enzymes in the blood saturation it is lipoprotein lipase, then in the adipose tissue it is hormone sensitive lipase. And after forming these two products, 
after forming these two products here and here, now we want to see the fate of glycerol. How does the body deal with glycerol? And how does the body deal with free fatty acids? So let us begin with free fatty acids. Free fatty acids. The free fatty acid is formed in the blood saturation. These free fatty acids, in case they are transported freely, they can attach on the walls of the blood vessels and it causes what we call atherosclerosis. So what happens, the God made a substance called the alb that in blood saturation free fat acids are transported bound to alb so what happens is that these free fat acids in the blood are transported bound to albumin they are transported bound to albumin they are transported bound to albumin transported bound to albumin so that to prevent them being deposited in the blood walls and they are transported to the liver. They are transported, they are from adipose tissue or blood saturation and they are being transported bound to arbu, arbu so that they are safely transported to the liver, hepatocytes. And when these free fat acids are in the liver, in the liver we have, in, in the liver, the free fat acids the liver hepatocytes has mitochondria. So in the mitochondria of the liver, this free fat acid undergoes beta oxy oxidation. In the mitochondria, we see the free fat acid undergoing beta, beta oxidation, whereby in the, in the process of beta oxidation, the free fat acids, Free fatty acids are converted to acetyl CoA. Acetyl coenzyme A. The free fatty acids are converted into acetyl coenzyme A by the process of beta oxidation. And this process of beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondria of the liver hepatocytes, so what you call the liver cells. So they undergo beta oxidation to form acetyl CoA. And this acetyl CoA is the intermediate of all biochemical reactions. Whereby when you have acetyl CoA, you can convert it into energy via Krebs cycle and electron transport chain, or we can use acetyl CoA for lipogenesis. And we can also use it for ketogenesis. And even we can use this acetyl CoA for cholesterol synthesis. So the acetyl CoA form, in the case of our body, it is starvation and we need energy. This acetyl CoA is taken into Krebs cycle. It undergoes Krebs cycle, or what we can call tricarboxylic cycle, and it is used to provide energy in the form of AT, ATP. ATP, carbon dioxide, and, and water. So this is the first utilization of fats. That in the case where there is a starvation, these fatty acids are mobilized and they are taken, transported to the liver bound to albumin. And they, when they are reaching the liver, in the mitochondria of the liver hepatocytes, they undergo beta oxidation. The former acetyl CoA and this acetyl CoA can be used in the mitochondria where they can undergo Krebs cycle to produce ATP carbon dioxide and water. But in case energy is not needed, what happens is that this acetyl CoA can be, and this one is, happens during much the starvation, whereby there is no oxaloacetate to combine with acetyl CoA to form citrate. So what happens, this acetyl CoA is channeled to ketogenesis, formation of ketone bodies. 
which are used to provide energy for the brain. Because the brain cannot use anything except the ketone bodies. So what happens, why, why are we forming ketone bodies? Because the brain lacks mitochondria. So it cannot utilize this energy because Krebs cycle cannot occur in the brain due to lack of mitochondria. So it needs the ketones. So this acetyl-CoA undergoes the ketogenesis leading to formation of ketone, ketone bodies. Ketogenesis means the formation of ketone bodies. And these ketone bodies are the ones that provide energy to the brain cells. Because brain cells lack mitochondria, they cannot perform Krebs cycle. That's why when you do urinalysis using dipstick, when a patient who has been starving for long, we normally find the ketones in urine. Isn't it? And that is the reason why you, because there is a ketogenesis occurring. And if this acetyl CoA is too much, we can use it for lipo. In the case, this acetyl CoA produced, we don't need the ketones bodies such as acetone and acetoacetate. We can, and we don't need the energy, we can also channel it back and we use it for fatty acid C synthesis by the process known as the lipoge lipogenesis. Lipogenesis is the synthesis of fatty acids. Or still we can use this acetyl CoA for cholesterol synthesis. So that's why I said that this acetyl CoA form is the intermediate of all metabolic pathways. It is the intermediate. This same acetyl CoA, it can also be used for gluconeogenesis. It can even undergo gluconeogenesis. It can undergo gluconeogenesis to produce glucose. So this is the utilization of free fatty acid. Free fatty acid after being transported to the liver within the mitochondria of the liver undergoes beta oxidation to form acetyl CoA and this acetyl CoA is produced, is used in these different ways. Then lastly is the fate of cholesterol, of no, not cholesterol, glycerol. How does the body utilize glycerol? Let me use here. So with glycerol, if we have glycerol, remember this glycerol is in the blood circulation or in the adipose tissue or in the skeletal muscles. So this one is also transported to the liver. Transported to the liver. And in the liver, this glycerol is phosphorylated. How? That if I have glycerol, it is converted to glycerol three phosphate. And where do you think the phosphate is coming from at carbon number three? Means ATP is involved. We are seeing hydrolysis of AT, ATP. Whereby ATP is hydrolyzed to A, ADP plus phosphate in you know, inorganic. And whenever you see ATP, think of a kinase enzyme. And this kinase enzyme is called a glycerol kinase. The presence of glycerol kinase enzyme. So what glycerol kinase enzyme does, he gets one phosphate group from ATP and adds him on a glycerol at carbon number three, forming glycerol three phosphate. And this glycerol three phosphate formed, the glycerol three phosphate formed is oxidized, it undergoes oxidation to form dihydroxy. 
dihydroxy acetone which is an intermediate of Krebs no intermediate of glycolysis so how is it oxidized we need NAD here we need NAD whereby NAD H is used to form NAD plus and whenever I see NAD involved I think of a dehydrogenase so this one occurs in the presence of glycero 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme we call it a dehydrogenase so glycero 3 phosphate dehydrogenase is the one that catalyzes the oxidation what is oxidation oxidation is it, is it addition of hydrogen or removal so this is an oxidation reaction whereby we are removing hydrogen remove hydrogen so meaning this one is nad plus because this nad plus is removing hydrogen from glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate that is an oxidation reaction forming dihydroxyacetone and whenever we have dihydroxyacetone we can form pyru pyruvate isn't it you know that in the glycolysis fructose 1 6 bisphosphate is converted into dihydroxyacetone and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and they have interconversion of an enzyme called triose isomerase isn't it so i can even use this dihydroxyacetone to form glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate can be used to form pyruvate and this pyruvate can undergo gluconeo gluconeogenesis to produce glucose and also this pyruvate can also be used under Krebs cycle to provide energy in the form of AT so the fate of glycero is that this glycer is transported to the liver that is converted into glycero into glycero 3 phosphate by this glycero kinase then glycero 3 phosphate is oxidized to dihydroxyacetone which is an intermediate of glyco glycolysis so we can use it to provide the pyruvate which can be used to build glucose in the case the body that lacks glucose and that glucose can be used to provide energy and that is the end of metabolism of the pits. Thanks for listening, my dear subscribers. Always remember to like the video and put comment and subscribe so that we keep building our channel. Thanks so much for listening. I remain Muhumza Naftal at medicalscience.com.